Okay, we talked about the Ford electronic return of fuel system during our PowerPoint presentation. So what we want to do here is take a good look at the signals here with the DSO. If you recall, pin number one is the command signal from the PCM to the fuel pump driver module to command a fuel pump driver module for the duty cycle command to the fuel pump. During our presentation during PowerPoint, you recall the signal is looked at by the fuel pump driver module and automatically doubled. Now we know that we have a scan tool parameter that shows you that, known as F slash P fuel pump duty cycle command. Typically at idle, you're going to see about a 27% duty cycle command. Now remember, when you look at that data, that parameter in your scan tool, that's only the command. What we're doing here with the lab scope is we're making sure the signal actually went, got to the fuel pump driver module. If you take a look at the modus right now, you'll see that it is a 5050 toggle happening at about 150 times a second or 150 hertz. Notice that the logic high portion where it stays at the 5 volts looks to be about 25, 26, maybe 27 percent, while it's pulled to ground about the 75 percent. So what, we're, what this waveform is basically telling us is the fuel pump driver module reads the 5 volt, the, the time the signal is at the 5 volts, and it takes that 27 percent values we're looking at right now and actually doubles it. In this case, as you will see, when we actually look at the drive signal, from the fuel pump driver module to fuel pump, that 27% duty cycle command is going to be doubled. So what we're going to be looking at would be about a 54% command from the fuel pump driver module to the fuel pump itself, which you'll see on, an, on our next exercise. Okay, we previously looked at the duty cycle command from the PCM to the fuel pump driver module, and we talked about what the fuel pump driver module does with that signal. Remember, it doubles the duty cycle command, and then we have a big fat driver, a large driver inside the fuel pump driver module that actually turns the fuel pump on and off. Now, it's interesting, if you look at the scope screen, notice that the, this signal is occurring at 9,600 times a second. So, basically, this fuel pump driver module is controlling this fuel pump, turning it on and off 9,600 times a second. Look closely on the screen, you'll see on the green trace, it's the battery voltage to ground toggle. Again, happening at 9,600 times a second. So you can, we're verifying two things here. We're verifying that the 8-bit microprocessor, being the fuel pump driver module, did in fact double that duty cycle command from the PCM. And by looking at its waveform, we can tell very quickly that this is not actually a ground side controlled pump. As we said about half of these pumps are feed side controlled, and the other half are ground side controlled. In this example, we're on the brown wire of the white tracer from the fuel pump driver module. The fuel pump, we're known that we see on this waveform that the fuel pump is in fact ground side controlled 9600 times a second. Okay, if you remember previously, we looked at the drive signal from the fuel pump driver module to fuel pump on the voltage trace that, remember, was occurring at battery voltage to ground 9500 times a second. That tells us the fuel pump driver module transistor, the driver itself inside the fuel pump driver module, is good. Now, what we want to do now is look at the electrical integrity of the fuel pump itself. I can tell you right now in these forward electronic return of systems, typically, Remember, they're toggled 9,500 times a second, on, off, on, off. So what you're going to see is the amperage waveform will never go to ground simply because it's simply not turned off that long enough. So what we're going to see here is the frequency on the amperage waveform, as we look at the amperage value of the pump, is going to match the frequency signal that you've previously seen on the voltage trace. So looking at the scope pattern right now, you can see typically that the amperage waveform it's peaking back and forth between 5 and 8 amps, showing good electrical integrity. The waveform is good. The amperage value is good. And this is the way we check, quickly check the electrical integrity of the fuel pumps on these Ford Electronic Return of Systems. Okay, referring back to the schematic on our PowerPoint presentation on the, on the Ford Electronic Return of Fuel System, we talked about pin number 7 of the fuel pump driver module is a communication line between the fuel pump driver module and the PCM. If you recall, the fuel pump driver module is basically an 8-bit microprocessor, so it's his responsibility to detect any kind of electric or electrical problems back there in the fuel pump drive circuit. So what we're looking at right now is a signal from pin number 7 of the fuel pump driver module back to the PCM. What this is called is fuel pump monitor, and when the fuel pump driver module detects that everything's okay, there's nothing wrong, what you're going to see is a frequency signal of 1 hertz which is indicated right now in the lab scope. Now look closely because you can see it's an 8 volt, 0 volt, 8 volt, 0 volt toggle. When the fuel pump driver module has detected no faults, what you're going to see on this signal is 
When it stays at 8 volts exactly for 500 milliseconds and it stays at 0 volts for exactly 500 milliseconds. So that is read by the PCM, even logic low, even logic high time, to where the computer detect or the fuel pump driver module is saying there are no problems back here and the PCM reads that. Now in the event of a fuel pump driver module failure, what will happen is the fuel pump driver module, if the transistor goes bad, it will send a signal to the PCM and change that duty cycle, which we referenced basically, if you recall, back in our PowerPoint presentation.